ulna. So as I mentioned earlier, the ulna is the longer of the two bones of the forearm. It articulates proximally with the trochlea of the humerus, as well as with the head of the radius. Distally, it again articulates with the radius. However, it does not articulate directly with any of the carpal bones of the wrist joint. Instead, it's separated from them by a small articular disc, which allows for a greater degree of rotation of the forearm, as well as ulnar deviation of the hand. So let's take a closer look now at the prominences, the borders and the projections, which define the surface of this bone. So beginning once again on the proximal anterior aspect, we're going to start with this prominence just here, which is known as the coronoid process. And the term coronoid is derived from the Latin word for crown. And as you can see in the illustration, as the name suggests, this bony landmark has a crown-like or mitered appearance. Immediately distal to the coronoid process is a roughened depression, which is known as the ulnar tuberosity. And this is also known as the brachial tuberosity, as it gives attachment to the brachialis muscle. And just lateral to this, we have the radial notch of the ulna, which accommodates the articular circumference of the radial head. Supporting the proximal end of the ulna with the humerus is this ligament here, which is known as the ulnar collateral ligament, which extends from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the medial aspect of the proximal ulna. Moving distally now, let's take a few moments to examine the shaft or the body of the ulna. And the ulnar shaft has three surfaces, which are the anterior surface, the medial surface and the posterior surface. So from an anterior perspective, the anterior surface is limited laterally by the interosseous border or the crest, which, as you guessed, provides attachment for the interosseous membrane. Medially, the anterior surface of the ulna is bounded by the anterior margin of the ulna or the border, which separates it from the medial surface of the ulna. Continuing to the distal end of the bone, where we can see that the ulna has a somewhat rounded form, this is known as the head of the ulna. So let's turn our attention to the posterior aspect of the ulna now, beginning once again at the proximal end, which as you can see is dominated by this large rounded projection of bone just here. And this is known as the olecranon, and it forms the posterior part of the elbow joint. To get a better idea of the shape of this process, let's briefly look at its profile and cross-section. And as you can see, as a whole, the olecranon and the coronoid process form a cup-shaped fossa, which accommodates the trochlea of the humerus. And this all together forms the elbow joint. And this depression is known as the trochlea or semilunar notch. And it's otherwise known as the greater sigmoid cavity of the ulna. Moving on to the posterior ulna shaft, we can see that it is largely defined by this border running along its length, which is the posterior border or the margin of the ulna. And this marks the division between the posterior and medial surfaces of the ulna. If we follow the posterior border down to the distal end, we will find it terminates at this somewhat pointed process here, which is known as the styloid process of the ulna. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.